Well, for more analysis of this topic, we're joined by Ryan Patel. He's an international business executive who's worked with a range of firms, from publicly traded companies to startups. Welcome back to the show. Thank you for having me. So as we heard, there's cautious optimism coming out of this latest round of talks. What were the biggest takeaways for you? Well, the big let's let's call and give them kudos that they've come to terms on creating this, uh, you know, getting out this unpredictability, and they kind of put this trade truce to a side. But what what I believe now is that the real pressure starts after 24 hours. This is all great news, but now it's time to make a deal. And I think to me, two things stand out. One is the trade surplus that the U.S. has been asking for for 200 billion dollars. What will China? Be able to buy how much of it, and the second piece is has been the intellectual property, um, and and what what headways is are, are are the U.S. going to make with China? Obviously, that's a tough tough task to finish, and those two points have been President Trump's and the administration's key uh, motives right now. Now, as we know, U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said the looming trade war was quote on hold. So, what does that mean for businesses trying to figure out how to plan for the future? Well, you know, one can argue today that Wall Street when it was up and they heard this news, but I would fair warn you, there's nothing binding about this. And I think um, the, the companies had definitely voiced their frustration as of last week and the week before. The administration heard it and it, they try to kind of cause the dollars now is kind of increasing back up. They kind of give a little more stability. I think, you, as you heard from the interview prior, you know, the U.S. companies are going to be involved when, when the U.S. officials go to China and to be able to get to a resolution that the U.S majority of the U.S. companies will appreciate. Now, we don't yet have specific details on all the goods which could be used to address the trade imbalance, but what are some potential sectors that we could see boosted from this? You know, obviously, you mentioned uh, energy and agricultural. You know, it, it's interesting to see if the U.S. and China, instead of looking at itself as adversaries about tech and IP, maybe they can come together. That would be a, a, a pretty inc you know, incredible thing, and obviously with the steel and ag agriculture piece as well. Now, obviously, China has changed a lot in the 40 years that it's been opening up. So is this an inevitable point in the trade relationship, given the sort of growth and development that we've seen in the last 40 years from China? Yeah, you know, for me, I, you can't ignore that China is a superpower and that they are looking at this as to, session, um, to rise to the top. And I think that is where you, you know, if you're in a trade negotiations, you, you've got to embrace that and see that perspective that that is what China is trying to do. And for the U.S., you know, I think there's a little pressure because they've got $100 billion of trade surplus that's going to come by by Oxford Economics has stated from other countries. So they're going to have this trade surplus and about right now $350 billion of trade surplus to the China. They're going to have to create something here with the China deal. Now, as we heard there, just when tensions appeared to be cooling, we saw that the U.S. Commerce Department has slapped steel tariffs on steel products that come from Vietnam but have originated in China. Does this risk putting the truce in jeopardy? You know, it's interesting because I think you saw today uh, Wall Street, the, the companies that are steel manufactured took a pretty large hit because of, you know, the tariffs potentially coming off. I think that is um, a situation that will be looked at. I don't think that right now, because of the process and practices they've done that in the past, that will be a huge point in this trade uh, play. You know, will it be a, a small piece? Sure, it will. But I think there's bigger, bigger points here that they're going to go after. Now, as we know, this started when the U.S. initiated tariffs, saying that it wanted a level playing field, and it also wanted to address intellectual property and technology transfer rights. But then the tariffs that the U.S. are, are using targeted high-tech industry upgrades with its Made in China 2025 plan. What sort of progress are we likely to see in the short term versus the longer term? Well, short term, I think there's going to be some... Um they're going to see something that the actually U.S. companies, you saw the companies today, Apple, Microsoft, all the tech companies took a huge bump. And I think anything that will benefit those companies that are leading the markets will be in a short term um, something that China will maybe give in. But I think the long term plan is pretty, it's pretty bit in stone. I think China's been very clear about what they want to do in 2025 and be the leader in all this. And I don't really think that anybody really can stop them. Um, when they are, when they have the, the manpower, the people, and, uh, and consumer spending power. And just very quickly, we know that both sides agree that no one's going to win in this tit-for-tat tariff standoff. What would perhaps be a better way to address these trade tensions? <laughs> Behind closed doors and not over Twitter. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I think what you, you got to take away from this is that this is not binding, and that in a week from now, if something doesn't go around, 
we may be back in the same position. And I'm hoping both countries have learned that by going out really publicly and not being able to handle this internally, it does create this chaotic um, notion, not just for investors, for Wall Street, for companies, and even employees, as you can see with the ZTE piece. All right, thank you so much. International Business Executive Ryan Patel.